Okay, so, we're finally in Terminal Field, and we're ready to head to the Swamp, which is the southern part of the world. So, I think I said previously that there are four areas, four main areas, minus the ranch. There's the Swamp, Canyon, Sea, and uh, Mountain. The order we go through them is uh, Swamp, obviously, first. Swamp, then Mountain, then Sea, then... Uh, canyon. So before we can enter the swamp we have to watch this cutscene which kind of explains a little bit of backstory between the fairies and the Skull Kid and how the Skull Kid got Majora's Mask. I'm gonna take a nap now because if I'm bored. And finally, we're back. So now we can head into the swamp. Sort of, not really yet. Before we actually head into the swamp, we got a couple short, easy things to do out here. Or rather, just one thing, I guess. There's a piece of heart nearby, and I believe that would be the fourth one, which would complete our first heart container. It's on top of this tree, however, there's a bunch of keys. I believe they're called bad bats in this game. Either way, there's a bunch of bats in the way. Actually, there's one sitting at the very top that you have to destroy, or else it's going to be blocking your way up. And others just kind of are hindrances, or annoyances, if you will. So, you have, definitely have to take, the ones, take out the ones sitting at the top, and then it's recommended that you take out the other ones so they don't get in your way. I took out two of them. I left the third one because... I was getting lazy. And, yeah, there you go. There's the fourth. Yep, I have four hearts now. That was the fourth piece of heart. Coolio. Now there's Tingle again. I was going to buy a map there, but I did not have enough rupees. And an interesting thing to keep in mind is that when you buy a map, buy it from the area you're in. Like, what I mean by that is, if you're in Woodfall, buy the Woodfall map. If you're in Snowhead, buy the Snowhead map, and so on and so forth. It's cheaper that way. Because Tingle always sells two maps, one of the area you're in, and one of the next area you're gonna go to. The one of the area you're already in is gonna be cheaper, and the one where you're going to next is gonna be more expensive. You can buy it if you want, but if you want to save money, just wait until you get to the next area, and buy it then, okay? Perfect. So anyway, here we are in the southern swamp. One thing to keep in mind is part of this water is poisonous. Not this part, as you can see this part is clear. But later on there's going to be some poisonous water that you definitely want to keep, you know, keep away from. As Deku Link, the water isn't the problem because you can't actually go in it. 
and if you do, you just respawn, if you know how Deku Link's jumping thing works. However, if you jump into the water as Human Link, you're going to be hurting fast. And if you're not nearby a shore, you're probably going to die. So, just be really careful around poisonous water. And you're going to be able to tell when it's poisonous. It's going to be purplish, pinkish, that sort of off color. So, keep that in mind. Anyway, here's the potion shop. Um, there's really nothing we can do here yet, so I have to leave. And behind the potion shop is a small wood... Uh, I think I think this place is actually called the Lost Woods. Or, nope, Woods of Mystery, my bad. Anyway, the Woods of Mystery is basically a maze like the Lost Woods, except it's much smaller in scale. And the path you need to take changes depending on what day you're on. First day, you have a set path. Second day, you have a different path. Third day, you have another path. Simple. Now, I have the first day's path memorized, so I didn't need to talk to the monkey. There's a monkey at the beginning of the area. You can talk to him, and he'll lead you around. But if you memorize the path, you don't need to talk to the monkey. I have the f Again, I have the first day's memorized, so I didn't need to talk to the monkey. But, yeah. It's not too relatively relatively difficult to figure out if you know that the Woods of Mystery is a 3x3 three three square and that Link starts on the bottom middle square, if that makes sense. Knowing that, you can kind of figure out the possibilities of where to go and where not to go. Or you could just talk to the monkey and follow him, if you want to make it easy for yourself, I guess. But anyway, after you see the witch in the forest, you can talk to the potion shop lady and get your first bottle with a red potion in it. Obviously, you don't want to drink it because you want to give it to the witch in the forest. So, you know, hold on to it. And if you don't, you're going to have to be buying your own uh, red potion. Because I believe you do need to... Uh, to save this witch in the forest, or else you will not be able to reach the Deku Palace. So anyway, we're going through the Woods of Mystery again. <sighs> through the woods, through the woods, through the woods. And here she is. I have a potion for her this time, so I give it to her. Another thing that people seem to have trouble with in my old walkthrough is that in this game, you do not walk up to people and press the... Okay, uh, let me restart that. If there's a person you want to give something to, you do not walk up to them and press the item button. You do not do that in this game. In this game, you have to talk to them, and then they'll give you the option to bring up your start menu and then pick out the item you want to give them as was shown just here when I gave her the red potion. If you do not get that menu, you cannot give someone something. Keep that in mind, because it happens quite often throughout this game. It also happened when I was talking to the Deku Scrub and giving him the Moon's Tear. So that's definitely something you want to keep in mind. And it's actually a lot more useful than the method in uh, Ocarina of Time, which was just walking up to a person and pressing the item button. Because say, for example, you had a bottle of water you wanted to give someone for some reason. There's a slight possibility that you weren't lined up correctly, you'd press the bottle of water, and you'd lose the bottle. It sucks. But that's not the case in this game. Anyway. I have plenty of rupees now, so I can go buy the Woodfall map. Which is what I'm gonna do right now. After... there we go. Talk to Tingle again. What a freak. Woodfall. As you can see, Woodfall was only 20 rupees, while Snowhead was 40. That's what I 
was trying to get at earlier. But now that we've saved the witch and we have a map to the place, we can go into this little house hut thingy here, talk to her, we'll get the pictograph box, and we'll get a free ride to the Deku Palace. Which we want to take. Because, again, not only is the water poisonous, but there's something blocking our way that only the boat can take care of, I believe. So, the pictograph has um, two uses, I think, in this game. One is to get a piece of heart from this, uh, this swamp thing. And the other is to get the seahorse in the Great Bay area. I will not be getting the piece of heart here, but if you want the piece of heart, you need to disembark at the Deku Palace, go into the king's chamber, and take a decent picture of the king, and give it to that guy in the hut. If you get it, if you have a decent enough picture, he'll give you a piece of heart. As for the seahorse I was talking about, we'll get to that later, much later. Anyway, that gigantic octorod, that was the obstacle I was talking about. The boat is able to kill it, and we can gain access to the Deku Palace. And I know it's kind of tough to see, but the water is poisonous now. If you pay close enough attention, you can see that it's purple-ish. And the game even tells you right there. But yes, we are disembarking, and we're going to head into the palace. <laughs> 